Will nuclear fusion technology save us? If you don't know what nuclear fusion is, it is basically when you have an atom and another atom, they really like each other, fuse into one new atom and in the process releasing a lot of energy. Almost every single form of energy that we are using today came one way or another from nuclear fusion. Those fossil fuels that we depend on so much, oil, natural gas, and coal, came from nuclear fusion. But this nuclear fusion did not originate here on Earth. It originated from a place that is 150 million kilometers away from Earth. And it is the Sun. The Sun is basically one gigantic nuclear fusion power plant. And the energy that we're currently using today comes from that. It is basically stored Sun energy. And it's not just the sun. In fact, we are using energy that came from nuclear fusion processes that happened before the sun was even a thing. You know those nuclear power plants that we have today? Those nuclear power plants use something called nuclear fission, the opposite of nuclear fusion. Nuclear fission is when an atom splits in two, still releasing a lot of energy. Now, those power plants use fissionable fuel and that fissionable fuel can only originate in a superheated nuclear fusion process that happens in the death of a star, a supernova. In fact, life itself would not have been possible without nuclear fusion. Not only that, Earth, the Sun, the solar system, the galaxy and even the universe cannot be what they are without nuclear fusion. So you can see from that that nuclear fusion is pretty important. So imagine what we could do if we can take that power and bring it right here on Earth using human ingenuity. What if I told you that the question that we have at hand here is not whether nuclear fusion technology is possible or not. The question that we have at hand here is just to see how we can make it more efficient. And through projects such as the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, we may be able to achieve this very soon. A clean, almost unlimited energy source. What could go wrong? A lot could go wrong, and here is my opinion on why. Here is the problem. Let's imagine that we find a way to give ourselves an unlimited supply of energy whether through nuclear fusion or not. It doesn't matter. Here is the issue. The issue is humans have this thing called unlimited wants and needs. And these unlimited wants and needs are a big part of economics because economics try to manage finite resources in the face of these unlimited wants and needs. Now, when we have unlimited energy, this means that our economy would grow overall. And that means consumption would increase because of these unlimited wants and needs. And that consumption means more resources would be required, which is a problem. But here is a fantastic thing about having an unlimited supply of energy. Energy is so important and so vital that if you need a certain type of resource, energy can provide it to you even if the resource is not energy. What does that mean? Let me give you an example. Right now I live in a desert country called Bahrain and we cover our water needs through two methods, the extraction of groundwater and the desalination of seawater, which is basically getting seawater, removing the awful stuff from it, and now, well, you can use it. The problem is desalination is a very energy intensive process. But, but, if we had an unlimited supply of energy, now we can rely exclusively on the desalination of seawater. We don't need groundwater anymore. So even if the economy overall will start growing, and that means more resources would be required because of it growing, unlimited energy actually allows you to cover the need for those resources because energy gets you resources that are not energy. But even with that, there is a problem. In my fact breaker number two video, I mentioned a particular fact that said that if you had two rats and you gave them an unlimited amount of resources, in a matter of a year and a half, they could give you one million tiny little rats. 
But then I broke that fact by saying, hold on a minute, there is an issue with that. Because after a while, things get very crazy. I mentioned in the video that if you wait 50 years, only 50 years, reproducing at that rate means that you will end up with a number of rats that would exceed the number of Planck volumes in the observable universe. And a Planck volume is a ridiculously small volume. An atom is much, much, much bigger than a Planck volume. The reason that they can't grow to such a ridiculous level is because of something called population dynamics. Now don't get me wrong here, I am not saying that humans are rats. What I am saying is that humans are governed by the same rules that govern the population of rats, which is in this case the rules of population dynamics. Give us an unlimited amount of resources and our population will grow. Limit our resources and our population will dwindle. It's a very simple, easy concept to understand. But in this video, what I have been discussing so far is an unlimited source of energy. And while I have mentioned that energy allows you to get resources that are not energy because energy is a very flexible resource, eventually something is going to give, or to put it more accurately, not give. For an example of this, we don't need to experiment with an unlimited source of energy. We just need to take a look at a point in time when humans have had access to a lot of energy, you know, like today. Since the introduction of fossil fuels, the human population grew like crazy. There's a reason that the 7 billion people on the planet today constitute about this much out of all humans who have ever lived on the planet. Even if you have an unlimited source of energy, as I've said, something is going to stop giving you. Maybe you'll end up with a water crisis, or a food crisis, or oh, hold on a minute, don't we have those already? But let's assume that food, water, or any other type of resource that energy can create more out of are not really going to be an issue. The thing is, there are still resources that energy can't create more out of, and one example is space. You can only fit so many humans in a particular area. If we took every single square meter in Earth's land area, and we put a human in every single one of them, the maximum number of humans you can accommodate is about that much. Now some of you might be saying, well we can build skyscrapers. You still have the problem. Eventually you will hit a limit. And here lies the problem. Now if you're thinking, stop thinking. And consider this as well, then continue on with your thinking. You might be thinking that this is only a population issue. However, there is something that humans do that would possibly make having an unlimited source of energy a problem before we get to a level of population that is unmanageable. How exactly? Let me ask you this. Have you ever been asked a question that said, what would you do with a million dollars, or 10 million, or 100 million, or a billion? It doesn't matter what the amount is. What matters is that you have been asked that question. I have been asked that question myself, and I've heard a lot of answers. Some people say they want to buy a car, some want to buy a house, some want to be good with it, and they want to donate it to a poor community, they want to help build a country, and some people want to be smart asses about it and say, I'm going to invest it. It doesn't matter what you say. If your answer contained spending that money in any fashion, this means you are guilty of the human tendency of having unlimited wants and needs. I have this problem and you have this problem. If, you've ha if you have money, you will want to spend. Spend it. And spending requires resources. Let me give you a proper example of this at hand. Here is a table that shows you the GDP per capita for EU members. And here is another table that shows you the actual individual consumption of those EU members. Now you might be saying numbers, numbers, what does that have to do with anything? If you compare the two, you will notice that there is a correlation between the two. The higher the GDP per capita, the more likely that the actual individual consumption is going to be higher 
as well. Here is another example. This is a table that shows the lowest household expenditure in Africa per capita. Let's see where the countries mentioned in those tables fall when it comes to the GDP per capita categories in the world. Let's see what we have here. Sierra Leone, lowest category. Central Africa Republic, lowest category. Zimbabwe, lowest category. Chad, you guessed it, lowest category. Guinea, Niger, Malawi, Burundi, Congo, Liberia, all of them, when it comes to their GDP per capita, are in the lowest category worldwide. What am I saying here? What I am saying is that the richer you are, the more you consume, and the more resources you would need. If you had 10 million people and those 10 million people had 1 billion dollars and then you had another group of people, 1 million let's say here, and those 1 million people had 10 billion dollars, the 1 million people with the 10 billion dollars will consume more than the 10 million people with the 1 billion dollars. You see what I'm saying here? So with all that said, will nuclear fusion technology really save us? The answer is yes and no. I know you hate these kinds of answers, but unfortunately that's the way it is. Because of things like population dynamics and unlimited wants and needs, it is not a straightforward answer. I can tell you this, however, if we implement nuclear fusion technology, efficient nuclear fusion technology on a global scale today, and we continue to do things the way we are currently doing things, that would not be good for us. Why? Because what will end up happening is that we will just accelerate the use of resources until we hit a particular resource that will make us crash even harder than if nuclear fusion technology was not even in place. So what should we do? Should we not implement nuclear fusion technology? Well, that would be stupid because nuclear fusion technology probably will be the most important development in human history. There are ways we can approach it in the right way. One of the ways we can use nuclear fusion technology is through the Stephen Hawking way. The Stephen Hawking way recommends that we need to expand beyond Earth soon, otherwise we are going to be in trouble. And nuclear fusion technology can help us reach places that have not really been reachable without nuclear fusion technology. However, depending on what technology really allows us to do, we may still hit a limit on where we can expand. And if we do, we'll still be in the same position. So we need another solution. And this solution is probably harder than the first one. Remember, the first one involves space travel. The second solution is to limit our unlimited wants and needs and at the same time keep an eye on our population in order to achieve a sustainable lifestyle. Yeah, I know, very challenging. Now, which one of these solutions is going to be easier to do? I don't know, that's up to you. But for now, what I would like to say is that nuclear fusion technology is not a magic pill that will poof away humanity's problems. And I know this is cheesy to say, the only thing that can save, that can save humanity is humanity itself. That has been my take on will nuclear fusion save us? Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.